At the start of the year, we set out with a number of uh, core strategic objectives. The first one was to grow our software user base in the rail technology uh, products that we sell. The second one was to uh, benefit from a full post-COVID recovery in our events and traffic data business units. And the third one was to increase our addressable markets through acquisition. So on the software side, we've increased our overall recurring revenue by 13%, which is fantastic. And underpinning that is strong growth in all of our core software products. So that includes RailHub, our safety and risk management platform. It includes our smart ticketing and delay replay platforms. It includes our remote condition monitoring products. And really importantly, also includes the go live of our Trax Enterprise product, which is something we've talked about and been in development for the last two or three years. So overall, that's fantastic. We've seen really strong post COVID recovery in revenues, which is great given the actions we took during the pandemic to protect our teams and to protect the capability that we had. And then really importantly, we've also completed two more acquisitions. So we have entered the strategically important rail technology market in North America through the acquisition of Railcom. And we've also expanded our data analytics and GIS capability into earth observation through the acquisition of a Dublin based company called Icon Geo. We're reporting another good financial performance for the group for the year, characterized by high levels of revenue growth and continued strong cash generation. The revenue in total was 68.7 million pounds, which was 37% higher than the prior year. That's driven by strong organic growth. There was 24% organic revenue growth, which includes the benefit from the post COVID recovery in our events and traffic data businesses, as well as the benefit from the additional software rail contracts that we won in the year. And our recurring revenue from the rail technology and services division increased by 13% to just over 21 million pounds. And in addition, there was a strong contribution from the ICON and Railcom acquisitions in the year, which collectively delivered £5.3 million of revenue. Our adjusted EBITDA increased by 9% to £14.2 million. And in the prior year, we received approximately £900,000 of furlough grant under the government's scheme, which we didn't claim in this financial year. So if we adjust for that, the underlying EBITDA growth that's analogous to the revenue growth we saw was 17%. Our EBITDA margin decreased to 20.6%, which is reflective of the post-COVID recovery in revenues in the lower margin data analytics, consultancy and events division. On a statutory basis, profit before tax decreased to £2.6 million this year. The biggest drivers here were an increase in the contingent consideration that's payable in respect of Belvedi for the final year of its earnout, and that reflects the strong revenue growth we saw in the operations and planning side of the rail division. And in addition to that, we incurred 0.6 million pounds of transaction costs associated with the acquisitions of Icon and Railcom in the year. Our cash generation remained strong. We finished the year with 17.2 million pounds cash in total and no debt. And that was after spending £13.5 million in total on the acquisitions of Icon and Railcom, as well as contingent and deferred consideration in respect of acquisitions made in previous years. We anticipate there's probably about £9 million of contingent consideration that's payable in 2023. And that really reflects the final part of the earnouts for a number of the acquisitions that were made in prior years. We would anticipate generating free cash flows at a similar level to what we've done in the prior years. And therefore, it still leaves us well positioned to continue to invest in the acquisitive growth of the group to complement our organic growth opportunities. On the back of the strong COVID recovery and good cash generation in the year, at the half year, we reinstated our progressive dividend policy. And we're proposing a final dividend for the year of 1.1 pence, bringing the total dividend for the financial year to 2 pence per share. We continue to focus on integrating together the group. Now that we've completed a total of 17 acquisitions, it's really important that we put the, the platform in place to be able to scale the business and to be able to both add new acquisitions, but also to get scale economies from the technologies that we have across our group to date. So the number of important stages we've implemented this year. So the first one is strengthening the leadership team of the group. So we have appointed a new group managing director and a group people director. The group managing director is very experienced in delivery of large complex IT and SaaS based projects, which is a really important growth area for us. And our group people director has been appointed to help drive 
a greater focus on career development, on investment in our people, and in generally upskilling the organization for the challenges that we have ahead of us. So alongside that, we also launched the One Traxxas Leadership Program. So over 100 members of our business have been enrolled in that program. And that is very much focused on collaboration. It's focused on being entrepreneurial and it's focused on how do we develop the next generation of leaders within our business. So that's been really well received by everybody. Alongside that, we're also centralizing our IT development platform, which will be really important to make sure we can develop continuity around the technologies that we deploy, the way in which we develop software, the way in which we test software, the way in which we support customers once those products have gone live. And also increasingly, we're looking at much more of a key account approach to how we sell the technologies that we have across the group. So how do we embrace the changes that will come with the Great British Railways model, where we're going to see a much more integration between the infrastructure side and the operator side to make sure that we're able to bridge those gaps between the different parts of the industry and offer a compelling product. And then the other really important step is that we have now formalized our ESG strategy as a group. So we are committing to be carbon neutral by 2030, which is a really important commitment for us as an organization. Our ESG approach has been employee led. And so we are deliberately picking initiatives that are really important to our team um, and which will hopefully bring the whole of the RESG agenda to life for them and make it very real and a key part of our future strategy. We're really pleased with how Railcom's performed since it joined the group in March of this year. It's delivered a strong financial performance for the period, 3.3 million pounds of revenue and a good level of profitability. That included delivering milestones on some projects that were in the order book when we acquired the business, but it's also continued to win new orders for its core yard automation and computer aided dispatch products. We see good growth opportunities for the group in North America both in terms of growing Railcom's core products, and we're seeing encouraging levels of demand for some of Traxxas's rail products that are already well established in the UK market. The biggest opportunity in the near term is in the remote condition monitoring space, both in the transit and in the freight sections of the US market. We also see opportunities in the operational performance software, particularly around movement planner and crew calling solutions. As well as performing well, we're really pleased with the cultural fit between Railcom and Traxxas. The teams are getting on really well and that's made a really positive start. We see a large addressable market for Traxxas in the US, at least as big as our UK addressable market, probably bigger. And in order to maximize that opportunity, one of our experienced rail managing directors has now relocated, is in situ in the US and is responsible for driving that growth strategy. Q1 has been strong. Our pipeline is really positive and we have a strong order book. So great fundamentals. One of the key questions we get asked is what impact is the UK's transition to Great British Railways going to have on our business model? The timing of that still remains uncertain, but the benefits that the approach will bring are universally accepted by the industry as being really important. So there is a definite momentum to make those changes. Um, and they're very much focused around improving the customer experience, improving operational performance of the railway, of bringing network rail and the operators much more closer together and using much more data to make far more proactive interventions in terms of how the railway operates. So that digital transformation is fundamental to what Traxxas does and it's fundamental to what most of our products deliver. So the transition, whenever it comes, is gonna be really positive for us as a business. And digital transformation isn't only just relevant here in the UK, but also in all other global rail markets as well, which is why we moved into North America this year. So we believe the prospects for our rail side of the business continue to be really strong, and we will continue to invest heavily in R&D in those areas. So overall, we remain committed to our overall growth objectives. We are going to continue to invest both in strong organic growth and in acquisitions. We're going to continue to invest in our ESG objectives. Um, and overall, the business is in great shape and the team are doing a fantastic job. So a huge thank you to everybody for the contribution to our success.